There we go. All right. <laughs> Maybe I should just uh -oh. auto enable. So, all right. So there's uh -oh. going to be our, uh, our schedule. Um, so I'll end the meeting. Uh, I'll come right back in to the next one. I think I've got it set up. It's the same number. I'm hoping that maybe you guys could just stay. I don't know. Uh, Jeanette asked, uh, what about retake tests? All right, we're going to get to that. Okay. Oh, are we going to do testing? Well, I'm going to get into that. Uh, okay, so I have a couple questions I need to ask. First one is, how many veterans do I have in the class? I think it's five. Um, how do I ask this question? I don't know. Uh, I'm I think one. Thing. You can yes. raise your hand. So <laughs> who's on who's on veteran status? Hold on, let me look for uh, the raising the hand. Cameron Scott is. Cameron is. Oh, let me hang on. let's just put it next to your name. I got uh, Cameron Scott is a veteran. Who else is a veteran? Julian is. Julian, that's right. Raise my hand. I don't know if it shows. Uh, oh, Julian did. Yeah, hang on. Yeah, raise your hand if you're a veteran. Raise your, uh, uh, Cameron, you're clapping. You're not supposed to clap. You're supposed to raise your hand. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, so I can see that screen. I got a switch. I got Julian and Cameron. That's all I've got. I know I have more than that. You guys suck. All right. If you're a veteran, I need to know. You got to let me know. Uh, okay. Uh, are you okay with technology? I think I just answered my question. Maybe not. Uh, if you need help with technology, there's a lot of things going on in uh, on the campus where they can get you free, free stuff. And now we have to figure out how to exactly erase my board. Otherwise, it's going to be there all day. There we go. It's probably going to be annotate, right? Erase. Hey, look at that. Am I okay with technology? I'm getting there. All right. Uh, moving on. What else do I have? Oh, yeah. All right. So we have the syllabus. Everybody's aware of the syllabus. Let me pull one up. Syllabus. All right, syllabus looks about the same as it always does. Why? Because I wrote it beforehand. So everything's the same on this syllabus as you've seen before. Nothing new. Um, so let's talk about what is going to be new get to your question. So in Canvas, can, yeah, Canvas, you're going to find both the syllabus, the syllabus addendum, and you are going, and, and there is uh, the little uh, syllabus quiz in there too. So please take that by tomorrow. Okay, so what's going to be different? Uh, Arrow 313 lab <laughs> suspended until further notice. Aero 312 lecture will be conducted 100% through distance learning. Classroom grading is modified as follows. The two-part full period test at the end of each model module is not going to happen. So I will not provide any necessarily, well, you have your Q&A tests. And I think what I'll do is I'll probably add some questions in there and make like another quiz. Same rules apply. You can go in and take the quiz as many times as you want. Best four stamps. And I'll put some of my instructor questions in too. But I'll, I'll even have it labeled different for the instructor. All right. Unfortunately, this is what the FA is going to make me do. Students will take a proctor, proctor cumulative final exam to cover the material presented in Aero 312. So at some point, I don't know how this is going to work, but we're supposed to get together before I eat two grades and you are going to take a cumulative final. Um, you guys are making too much noise. Let me figure out how to mute you. I believe it might be Abby's phone. Does everyone else see the the the, the grayed out squares and what? I, I see yeah. it too. Yeah, it's covering his stuff on his screen. Mm -hmm. What's that? There's some uh, 
No. Gray spots in the screen now. Oh, there it's clear. Oh, that's what it is. So now is there a gray spot in the middle? There's yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right, that's my. There's also one at the top of the screen. Also on the top. All right, that's the. Uh, right, yeah, thing. How about now? It's still there. Still there. Oh, oh it's gone. It's because you're looking at Microsoft Word. But, okay. Uh, okay. So you're gonna have to have a final test in person, proctored. Uh, it's gonna be a normal test, what you're used to. It's just that it's uh, one big final. So it'll be two parts. It'll be Q and A, and it'll be the instructor part. And just like always, you got to give 70 on mine, 80 on the other. Um, here's the hard part. One test. It's like a one test, one shot. So while I wrote this in here, students to fail either part must pass the retest on the failed part. What's going to happen is I'll still let you retake it, but you have to think that through. If you get a 50 on my part, that's a failure. So the only way this really helps you is if you got like a hundred on the Q and A and maybe a 60 on my part, then they could possibly average out. So can you, could you say that again? All right. So the same rules apply that you have to pass my part with the 70 and mm -hmm. the Q and A with an 80 on this big final and whatever grade you get is the grade that's going to stand. So okay. if you got a, 50 on my part, well, a 50 is not passing, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so you, you'd fail the class. The okay. only way this would save you is if you got 100 on the Q&A and a 50 on my part and the two averaged out to like a C, then you'd be okay, but you still have to pass both parts. Follow? And, and there is no retakes, right? There is a retake, yeah. Oh, okay. So, but if your original score isn't high enough to pass, then you're still not going to pass. Yeah. It's just that the two tests do combine to give you an average, and that might help you out. All right. So I tried to give you the best. All right. So, uh, yeah. I don't, and honestly, I don't even know exactly when we're going to be able to do this test. So. What happened? Um, I do get a, I don't know, you, you might get the same thing. You get a highlight, whoever's making, talking and making a bunch of noise. And so MJ just lit up the screen there. So I muted him. Muting. <laughs> All right. uh, okay. Course delivery. Obviously, I did already said this. Uh, delivered 50 minute segments beginning at 3.30, Monday through Friday. Uh, for a period of four weeks, we need to do 80 hours. So that's how we get to 80 hours. Attendance and interaction. Attendance will be taken the beginning of each module. Each module means each hour. I'm not excited about doing that again. Uh, students are expected to be engaged in the classroom by asking questions and responding with appropriate gestures. Raise your hand, clap, thumbs up, down is provided by the online platform. Uh, students that fail to respond to a teacher request for interaction will be marked absent for that hour. Like if right now, if I said, okay, everybody who's listening, give me a clap, All right? You should be able to do that. All right, so Dominic, Steve, so I should see all these, these claps light up. There you go. So figure out how to do that. How do you do that? The bad thing is they go away pretty rapidly. Where's uh, the raise of the hand one? I can't find that one. Oh, yeah. I like the raise the hand thing better because then I can make them – because the claps are there and then they're gone. So try that. Everybody figure out how to raise your hand. How do you do that? How do you do that? I don't know. I only Somebody see who's done it, tell me up. how you do that. <laughs> on oh, I'm on the <laughs> – It's under participants. Mm -hmm. How'd you do that? There's uh, three dots on the bottom, more. Oh, it's under oh. participants for those of you on the computer. Click on participants, a window pops up. There's a bunch of I options. Saw saw. Oh, there you go. I don't see my name on the button, oh, never mind. I don't even think I can raise my hand, probably because I'm a participant. Yeah, same here. Oh, oh, okay. It's in the, in the group chat, in the little messenger box. Okay. The fair idea, like MJ hasn't figured it out. I don't see, well, it says Brian Torres, but I know that's not Brian. Um, some of you guys, different names. Um, so Juan, but Juan's not officially in the class. All right, so everybody's got it, but August. Yes. You gotta raise your hand when I say raise your hand. That way I know you're here and listening. There you go, all right. Now, Steven, you haven't figured it out yet. 
But this is the way I told the FA that I would make sure that we have people involved. I see chat, clap, and then thumb, like thumbs up, but I'm trying to... Go to the participants tab. Participants. Okay. Yep. Oh, I see it. Raise hand. Okay. Now everybody put your hand down. You figured it out. All right. Included with the Zoom deal is a thing that I can go into, and it gives me your attentiveness score. And it does it by module. So also I will go in and look at your attentive score. It actually gives me, that's how I'm gonna do roll. It tells me who, what time you entered, what time you left, and it told me how well you paid attention. I don't know the algorithm, how it figures that out, but it does. Uh, so students that consistently score under the class average will lose one letter grade and maybe drop from the class. So every time I go in the attentive score, if I see somebody on there who wasn't attentive, came in early or late, then I can't give you the credit. At this time, there are no provision, that should be provisions for makeup time. Therefore, students must attend each class meeting to receive a passing grade. The FAA did not authorize me to do any sort of arrow 200 at this time, so I, I don't know. I did request through the FAA, and it was one of the options they gave us, to allow up to 80 hours of missed time. I requested it and I don't want to say they denied it. I'm just going to say they did not acknowledge it. And I didn't get to talk to the FA guy, even though I wrote it, and I don't remember his name. And he said that uh, he tried to keep it from being an overwhelming amount of work. He knew we needed our, our approval by today. So he did what he needed to do, and I'm very appreciative of that. So that being said, what do you have to do? In Canvas, you have a copy of this, you have a copy of the syllabus, and you have the syllabus test quiz. You will go in there and do that. There are no time cards that we would normally do. There are no waivers that we would normally do. So I guess that is that for the introduction. Questions that you may have. You guys are now being very quiet. So yeah, how are we gonna do a test? Oh, actually, my bad. I, I got that answered. Yeah. Got it. All right. Hey, what are we? Uh, what are we doing for this class? Like, what are all the parts that we're gonna go over? Okay. What are the parts we're gonna go over? Um, do I have it in here? You know what's best? Let me see if we can do Canvas. Canvas. Do I have Canvas around here somewhere? Here we go. Pull up. Well, you can look at your own canvas. Uh, sure. Modules. Bring this over. All right. So our modules. Module one is going to be aviation fuel and carburetors. Then we're going to talk about fuel pumps, and then we're going to talk about pressure carburetors. The reason why we're doing this, first we have to talk about fuel, because most of this is going to be about fuels and stuff. So we're going to understand fuel, then we're going to get into basic carburetors. Then we're going to go into carburetors and fuel injection systems to take some pressure. So before we can talk about that, we talk about fuel pumps. Then we go back to a carburetor that takes pressure. Then we're going to have our spring break. Then we're going to talk about fuel injection systems, then magneto timing, induction systems, turbochargers, superchargers, fixed pitch propellers, controllable pitch, constant speed props, prop governors, and propeller auxiliary systems. That is what we are going to cover. You still having spring break? Yeah, why not? Oh, all right. Cool. So for the final, <laughs> the final, Brian Lay. Um, okay. Like so they asked about the final. Uh, yeah. So like, you know how you did the the kind of the oil test? You kind of took like five questions from each. Uh, I think Q and A. I think. Yep. Is, it, is that pretty much what you're going to be doing for each section? Yes. Okay. Yep. So what I'm going to do is I will maybe publish some of my questions put them up in there so that you guys have the opportunity to at least experience some of my questions. Um, how many questions are on your final? I haven't wrote it yet. We'll see yeah, how, but it goes. How, how many are you thinking? Of? How many am I thinking? <laughs> like uh, five to 10 for each, each subject. Okay. So what did we have? Eight subjects, 10 would be 80. Oh, that's too many. Five would be 40. So yeah, it'd be about five. All right. Give me about five. Uh, I like it. Mm. Just use two Scantrons. <laughs> oh, yeah. We don't want two Scantrons. So no more than 50. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. You guys 
totally took my idea of the green screen. I just bought one. Actually, I think it's a background thing that you do inside Zoom. What? Yeah, you could just yeah. go to background. You don't need a green screen. Yeah, you can just. Yeah, it detects your face. Oh wow, that's yeah. great. So, How are we gonna really finish turbans just for this? Okay, did you finish turbans? Yes, I believe you did. I think the answer is just gonna be yes. Okay. Okay. All right. So everybody, hey. put your hand up. Put your hand down unless you have a question. So it says J Rod, Devin. Daniel, Duncan, if you have a question, let's hear it. Wait, if you what? Put your hand down. If you got your hand up, put your hand down. Let's you have a question. I think Daniel was wondering about the, the retakes. All right. Uh, what about the retake? How do you do it? Okay. Someone yeah. has dial up. <laughs> That's some bad audio, Duncan. I would stick to chat, my dude. Yeah, I got mute you. <laughs> it didn't work. Hey, Kevin. Oh, uh, yeah, what? Alex, go. What if our internet cuts off? Come back like, on. I know, but is that going to mess up our uh, like yes. attendance? Yes, yes it does. So get back in as fast as you can. I recommend going to your phone if your internet cuts off because it cut off again. Yeah, have your phone ready. <laughs> like me right now. <laughs> All right, so I, I'm going to try and keep an eye on the chat window. You guys, I wrecked my bike. Did no. you really? Yep. Do you have, did you have oh, a brand bad, new bike? It? Huh? Didn't you have a brand new bike? That's not brand new. No. Just you kept slide out. Anymore. Was it on a bike night? It was the Jigsaw, like wasn't it? Feet. No, it was an R1. I flew like 15 feet. <laughs> All right. Well, should we get to work? Yeah. Yes, yeah. please. All right. Get my notes going here. Hold on. I got to pour the cereal. All right, I got yes and yep. I have no idea. You guys are talking to each other. That's fine. Okay. Um, I'll move this over. No, stop it. Bring this up. It's over. Hey, look at that. It's my good friend, Smooth Draw. Ooh. All right, so where's Janet at in this mess? She's, she's just doing, doing chat. She's just doing chat. All right. Well, there is a button that says go slower, go faster. Yeah. Uh, we're going to hit that. that go faster button. All right. So we are going to jump in after all this time and we're going to start talking right about carburetors. But first thing we're going to do is we got to hit fuel systems. And there are a lot of, uh, I did put a lot of resources in your canvas. You should have access to canvas both uh, for 312 and 313. I think most of your stuff should be in 12. It's just weird because we're not doing lab and I, I hope it works out well for you guys. Uh, all right, so we're gonna talk about the atmosphere. There we go, it's gonna work, yay. And this is even, I have to now learn how to write in this way. Atmosphere, talk about the atmosphere. Well, atmosphere, of course, I mean, is the, stu the stuff around us, the stuff that contains the coronavirus and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> and with Phil, you guys, I'm sure talked about this. What is a standard day? 29.9 inches of 18 degrees Celsius. Standard day is, I heard, so, I, I heard it, I think that was Julian. 29.92 inches of mercury and then it's like 29.92 inches of mercury and then 15 degrees or some shit like which that which is also 39. hg oh, no, that mercury. Um, 59 fahrenheit yeah. 59 fahrenheit all right well, let's talk about pressure so 29.92 inches of mercury pressure 
you have to excuse me while I try and figure out exactly the best position to put my stuff in so that I can write legibly. Not gonna lie, it looks better than your handwriting back in the class. What's that, Steve? And it looks just as good as your handwriting in the classroom, so it's not that bad. It looks just as good? Yeah. It's no, going for Steve, better than Steve, that. no, Steve. It's, <laughs> it's not that good. <laughs> All right. Uh, 29.8 inches of mercury, and I have that that is one inch. One inch of HG, HG, which is mercury, is... 13.6 inches of water. So it's close to close enough that one foot of, of mercury, one, sorry, one inch of mercury is about, well, I'd, it's close to one foot of water. So one inch versus one foot. That's kind of how I look at it. And the, the thing is I had a, the reason why I bring that up is because, and I don't know if this is a true story or not, but it'd be really cool if it is. So the guy who invented, who invented all of this, uh, Cerberometer was his name. Um, and we'll just make up this story. And this is what I heard, right? And I heard it as a true story. That he was experimenting with this whole idea of pressure and atmospheric pressure, which we know it changes, right? Um, we get high pressure, we get low pressure. When storms are moving in, we tend to have a low pressure. And so he's experimenting with this. But instead of having mercury, he's got water. So he wants to experiment with this pressure thing. And so what he does is he takes, and we could kind of duplicate it. We take like a kiddie pool and a kiddie pool and we fill it full of water, right? So if that was supposed to change to blue, I hate you. All right, uh, fill this kiddie pool full of water and we put this gigantic column that's sealed on the top up and it's in the water. I forgot to set this up. There we go. So we got all this water in here. And if we do it very carefully and we fill this column up full of water and we like put our hand down here below and we stick it in the big kiddie pool and then some of the water is going to come out but some of it's going to stay in. And he figures out that, wow, looking at this, how tall would this column of water be on a standard day? Got to work with me. 13.6 inches high. Uh, hang on, let me, uh, not, because no, it's water. Me, so it's going to be water, so it's going to be 39 times 16.6. Uh, feet, feet of water. So one inch is, I'm sorry, I, got, I screwed that up. One inch is 13 inches. So on a standard day, it's 29.92 inches of mercury. And if I said one inch is roughly a foot, how many then feet of water would we have? Almost 30, 30 feet. Right, it's about 30 feet, right? So he's got about 30 feet. 30 feet, feet. Yeah. 30 so. feet of uh, water. 30. Right, so this, this level right here is somewhere around 30 feet up in the air. Well, winter rolls around and he doesn't want to work outside. And so what he does is he brings this whole contraption in his house. And, but his house isn't real tall. And so he's got to cut a hole in the roof for this thing. So he's got this thing sitting in his house and he had to cut a hole in the roof. And of course he's down here and he's trying to see that up there. And it's kind of hard to see that water level. So what he does is he carves a little chicken, carves a little, a little ducky and he puts the ducky up here. And so now he can see the ducky represents the, the water level. And so what happens when a storm is coming, what happens to the pressure? It goes down. It goes down. So the water level starts to go down. Well, the little ducky comes in the side in, in, in the house. And then when it's sunny, the little ducky goes back outside. Well, he could see that. The problem was the uh, the town's folks, these, these can be the town's folks, they were very angry and they figured that he's a witch or a warlock, as it were, because the ducky is going in the house when the weather he's predicting the weather. And so they tie him up and burn him at the stake. And that is the end of Sir Barometer. Mm. I don't know if it's true. Maybe it is. Fat. All right. Yeah. Fact. True story. All right. So 14.7 uh, PSI is a standard day. All right. Um, so let's see. note. 
that note that the ratio ratio of HG is that fourteen point seven psia. Um, yes. Uh, what am I going to write? Note that the ratio of the psi to, to uh, mercury is about two to one. So HG to psi is about two to one. So for every two psi, we have about one mercury, which is to say that 28 inches, 28 inches um, HG is considered 14 psi, 14 psi. All right, uh, okay, so I heard this a little bit ago. So then what do we have for um, temperature? Um, 59 degrees, 59 degrees Fahrenheit or Celsius? 50, Fahrenheit. 15, 15 Fahrenheit. Celsius. All right, well, this is America, dang it. Um, so 15 degrees Celsius. There's more to that story. Where is it? Is this all? Is this around the world? I haven't seen anything about North America. Uh, level. The fortieth lateral <laughs> line. <laughs> yeah, I thought South it was North America. Huh? Okay, perfectly dry. The forty degree line or whatever across perfectly North America. Dry at latitude at, at latitude forty degrees north. Forty degrees north. Where is forty degrees north latitude? Can I pull it up? I think it should be right here. Boom, there's 40 degrees north latitude. Guess where we are? 40 degrees latitude. Yeah, we're well, San Francisco, so. 38 degrees latitude? I don't know. San Francisco's right down here. We're a little bit above San Francisco and over, so we got to be close. So, right about to where we are, which works out great since we're very centric to ourselves. All right, the reason why we talk about this is this is going to be a big deal in the entire class as we're talking about aircraft and aircraft go up in the altitude up in the atmosphere and as altitude increases increase in altitude I'm just not happy with this kevin i just want to say i miss your structured notes i'm working on my structured notes. oh you mean because you haven't had them for a while yeah okay. Phil's feels like Great dude, but his notes were just all over the place. <laughs> well, this this is why I write them to keep me in line. So, uh, oh, I see how. It if I am. Well, I'll tell you what. With all these stories, you're gradually becoming a Phil. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> Not complaining. Uh, He's a smart guy. Yeah, the older you get, the smarter you are. Mm -hmm. So, an increase. In, increase in altitude increase in altitude causes causes such the pressure to go down trying to figure out who's making all that dang noise it sounds like Julian yeah it was Julian I thought so I was an airplane <laughs> alright an increase in altitude causes Decreasing pressure. All right, a decrease in pressure is correct. Decrease. Oh. Decrease in pressure. A decrease in pressure. Uh, they call it a pressure lapse rate. So the pressure lapse rate, P-R-E-S-S-E-R. Lapse rate is one inch. One inch of HG per 1,000 feet. 1,000 feet in altitude. What else do we get as we go up? Decrease in pressure, we get a decrease in Davis oxygen. Ooh, I like that. E -C -R -E -C -R -E. Hey, Kevin, what's that dash after 1,000? Just. Uh, 1,000 feet. feet. Thank you. Already registered. There we go. 
If it's a one inch of mercury, would that be a half a PSI for every thousand feet? Um, you have to say that again. If it's, yeah. yeah. So if it's one inch of mercury, what was the question? If it's one inch of mercury per a thousand feet, would that be a half a PSI laps per a thousand feet as well? Half a PSI. Well, I haven't thought about that. One inch of mercury is, so the ratio is two to one. So yeah, so if we do the ratio right, I should have wrote this up here as PSI to HG, PSI to HG, so it matches two to one. But we don't really talk about pressure because pi pilots just don't. We talk about inches of mercury as a pilot. So we look at our altimeter, we look at our altitude, we think that way. We don't really think in absolute pressure. Uh, okay, so a decrease in temp. So the higher up we go, the colder it gets. I think Janet just asked a question. Um, are they in order? What does a pre pressure break? I don't understand. I think she's saying pressure lapse rate. Laps, L A P S E, lapse rate. Oh, lapse. That word right there is. L A P S E lapse rate. All right, so we have a decrease in temp. Decrease in temp. Well, we also have a temperature lapse rate. So a temp lapse rate. Temperature lapse rate is two degrees Celsius per one thousand. Is two degrees Celsius per one thousand feet or 3.5 degrees <clears throat> Fahrenheit per 1,000 feet. All right, so as we go up in the air, and I tell you that, to tell you this, as we go up into the air, remember we're dealing with engines, and we have to think about what is gonna happen to our engine as we go up into the air. So the effectiveness. It's less? Yep. The effectiveness of, well, well, that's not working well for me. Ooh, there we go. The effectiveness or density of the air is reduced. of air is reduced, is reduced. Um, is that what I want to write? No, the thought I'm saying here, <laughs> new thought, the effectiveness density of air is reduced the following way. Um, one, as humidity increases, as humidity, and let's try spelling humidity correctly. H-U-M. I D I T humidity is decreased. Sorry. The effectiveness of the air is reduced as humidity increases, as altitude does what? Increase or decrease? Increase. Increase is correct. And as temperature. Increase or decrease? Increase. 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 Oh. Yeah. As temp is as air gets hotter, it becomes less dense. Less dense air. Okay. Is less effective. So we're going to think about this in terms of what it's going to do to our engine through the carburetor. So carburetors are not brilliant pieces of machinery. They, for the most part, cannot measure air as it changes. They, they measure air, but it's just a, a, a dumb way of measuring air. And it doesn't do it by weight, it does it by volume, and we really need it by weight. So what I mean by that is um, effective air is dense, which means it weighs more. 
So let's talk about what, what makes the air very dense. Well, uh, humidity, um, it is dry air is dense. Um, altitude, as we go low, it, it's more dense. Um, and as it is colder, it is more dense. So if I have, if I'm on the ground right now, I don't know what temperature is outside, um, but it's, it's sort of cool. Uh, humidity is low and the temp is low. I've got dense air and it's good air. It's actually um, more usable, if you will. So as I go up in altitude uh, or fly through the clouds, my humidity is gonna go up. As I went up in altitude, it doesn't weigh as much. And if I pull on like carburetor heat, uh, I'm gonna get a lot more hot, I'm gonna get hot air, which is gonna decrease the effectiveness of the air. The carburetors, most of them do not know that. So their job is to take air that is coming in, measure that air and put the right amount of fuel into that air. Well, if I start messing with the effectiveness of the air, the carburetor doesn't know that, and they, they keep putting in the correct amount of fuel for what it thinks is the right amount of air, but it's not, because it's not effective air. So that's where we're going with all of this and why we're talking about this. And since we're on this subject, I guess for some reason I thought we should talk about this one, because it does matter if you're talking to pilots. Pilots will talk about different kinds of altitudes. Different types of altitudes. Um, we have the actual altitude. Actual altitude is the actual measured altitude above sea level. So actual measured. Yes. So if I have humidity. Was that a question? No. Feedback. Actual measured altitude above sea level. All right, so McClellan, we are what, 74 feet actual? Right, Stephen? Uh, we lost Stephen. Had a pilot question. Can you hear me? Can you hear? Sorry, I was, wasn't loading there, my, my iPad. What's the altitude of McClellan, Stephen? Uh, it is like 300 feet. I don't know the exact amount. Geez, now I'm going to have to pull up four flight here and you're pull, putting me on the spot. Uh, I think it's 74 feet. Oh, it's 74. Here, I can look right now. It's open. <laughs> Which, by the way, I don't keep my airplane there anymore. I moved it. Um, AGL, that stands for above ground level. So it is the actual measured altitude above the ground. So actual measured altitude above the ground. So this stands for above ground. It's uh, 77 feet sea level, sea level. All right, well, I came closer without going over. So if this is the price is right, I think I win. <laughs> yep. Um, and then we have density altitude. All right, so at um, McClellan, which is called MCC, it is 77 feet. It's 420. Yep. All right, 77. <laughs> is that actual AGL or density? Actual. That is my actual, all right? So I'm standing on the ground at McClellan. My actual, my feet are on the ground. Would, my actual altitude is 77 feet. I decide to climb to the top of our hangar. Am I at 77 feet or am I AGL? AGL. Now I'm at AGL. All right. I have no idea what that would be. So when oh. pilots give you their altitude, do they mostly just give you the above ground level? Yes. Okay. Uh, wait, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. Um, when we talk altitudes in aircraft, we talk actual. Okay. So if I'm at McClellan and it says the the uh, traffic pattern altitude is 1,100 feet. My altimeter is going to say 1,100 feet. That is sea level. So my above ground level is actually not displayed in the aircraft. All right. Okay. So density altitude. This is where we kind of want to stop and think about. So density altitude 
I cannot seem to find, I, I'm so used to standing up that this is just really bizarre having to sit down. Sorry to interrupt Kevin, but it is 4.20. Just give me a little reminder. And what time do we say we're gonna stop? 4.20. 4 4.20. 4.20. <laughs> 4.20. All right, so let's stop here. Uh, and I'm gonna see if we can do our break and come back, but thanks for letting me know. All right, thank Daniel. Yep. Evan, you should get a standing desk. Sounds good. Does everyone Ooh, break at 4.20, on? huh? <laughs> Sharp. <laughs> okay, Wait. On this. Yeah, it only takes. My time. laptop is too slow, so I'm okay. using sound from my phone. Yeah, um, it's already 4:23, so we lost three minutes. Well, that sucks for you. Um, I am going to hit end meeting for all, which means we have to come in. I may try doing just leave meeting and see how that works for you guys. I, I want to be able to record it, and I think that's what I have to do. So coming back. <laughs>